Okay, welcome to the CM Builder Product Update and Customer Spotlight event. <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. Thanks for everyone. Um, really excited to be here today. Thanks for everyone that's log logging in online and for everyone that's here uh, in the office uh, cheering us on. Before we dive deep into it, I want to give a special wel warm welcome to each of our presenters today. So I'll go one by one through them. Thanks to Emma Mitchinson from Mont McDonald Bentley, who's currently in the UK. It's a bit late there tonight. So welcome, Emma. How are you? Doing good? I think we're, oh, <laughs> I'm very unmuted. Anyways, we'll keep going. Uh, next, we have Paul Christian from KCS West Construction in Los Angeles. Welcome, Paul. Good to have you. Thanks for joining. Next, we have Xenia Gordienko from Etro Construction, based here in Vancouver. Welcome, Xenia. It's great to have you. Looking forward to your presentation. And I'm going to try it, Hunter, via Torek. How did I do, Hunter? You did great. <laughs> oh, there you go. I've been coached by my uh, Polish uh, colleague here from Nuts and Construction Services in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Welcome, uh, Hunter. Great to have you here. So super excited to get into all the presentations from the, from the customers today. Uh, before we do that, I just want to give you a quick agenda. So I'm going to talk for a couple of minutes, just introduce the product, what we're doing, why. Uh, then we're going to dive into the excavation feature live demo with my co-pilot, Pedro. Uh, the CM Builder Evangelist. He's going to be helping me today. Um, and then after that, we're going to dive into the customer spotlights and, and presentations, and we'll finish with some QA uh, question and, and answer at the end. Okay, so uh, real quick, I want to take a quick step back and talk a bit about why we're all here and what we're trying to accomplish with CM Builder. Um, I should clarify one thing for those who are online that do partake in our Key Future Friday shenanigans on LinkedIn and know that we're a bit of a culture that doesn't take ourselves too seriously. Um, like to work hard, play hard. Today, I'm gonna to strike a slightly different tone, a bit more serious. Um, we're super uh, razor focused on what we're trying to build and, we, and we're passionate about kind of trying to bring digitization uh, to scale in the, in the construction industry. Um, so, you know, today will be a little bit more serious than normal. I promise there'll be no uh, arm wrestles or any type of uh, wrestling events today at this event. Um, we believe Steam Builder is an important product, a pro product to build. Um, and, and net new to the world. So we are trying to build net new to the world things, make it really easy to scale. And, um, and ultimately, you know, we're really passionate about that. What's our goal with CM Builder? Our goal is to build an operating system for construction planning and making it accessible for everyone. So the goal is to make an operating system for construction planning and making it accessible for everyone. What does that mean? So um, an operating system for construction planning means you know, easy ways, a full, a full digital toolkit to make it easy to be able to model and simulate site setup, you know, sequencing logistics, real-time cost analysis, running real, you know, rapid scenario analysis, and being able to, you know, quantify, you know, different elements like excavation, for example, that we're going to show today, and, um, and being able to kind of like get better data, drive better decisions, and ultimately bring more value to the end customer. As a general contractor, construction manager, it's a service business, right? So we're all service businesses trying to bring value to the customer. And that whole customer experience is dramatically improved with CM Builder. Uh, what do we mean by accessibility? So the first thing we mean by accessibility, I got a couple of notes here, just to make sure I don't make up, mess up too bad. Um, technologically accessible. So 100% web-based, easy to use, bring the tool to the fingertips of the people doing the work, right? So, you know, making uh, real-time, you know, superintendents, project coordinators, pre-construction folks, you know, being able to have uh, not just a web viewer, but an editor plus viewer, which allows you to do the job directly in the product. We also talk about accessibility from a collaboration perspective. So, you know, sharing data, not files, you know, sharing live links with data and intelligence and, you know, with a single click, allowing you to get in a, a customer in with no friction and, and consume your, your scenarios and your output from, from your simulations. We also talk about accessibility from a cost and business model perspective, right? So, you know, we're innovating and building as much of the stack as we possibly can so that we can control our costs and in the end, bring a lower end price to the customer. Because for the mid-market general contractor, cost is a factor, you know, and, and, and there's part of the reason why, you know, technology hasn't scaled quite at the rate of adoption we had all hoped is, that, you know, it's getting costly. And it seems like every year, the construction technologies in, in the, on the market are getting more expensive. So we're trying to face that head on. The last accessibility is ease of use, right? So product needs to be easy to use. So you don't need to be a ninja to run this system. At least that's our goal. Ninjas are allowed. We have a few in our office too, but generally we're trying to build a product that can scale and can be used by you know, the masses. So this is accessibility for us. Um, in, in 
you know, overall, um, in summary, we're trying to bring a high value, low effort, low cost solution that can scale with, with unlimited users throughout the entire organization. Really easy to kind of share virally, scale virally within your organization. The last thing I'll talk about before we dive into the live demo is, you know, this is only the beginning for us. We have a big long-term vision, which I won't go too crazy on today, but you know, ultimately, you know, if you look into the future, if you gaze in deep into the future, you see a big shift happening in the construction industry at the moment. Things like offsite manufacturing, yeah, prefabrication, uh, these types of advanced means and methods, semi-autonomous graders or equipment on site, fully autonomous equipment on site, uh, things like laying out wall robots to lay out walls on site. So these shifts are already happening and, and the construction site is changing. So if you look five, 10, 15 years from now, the problem on the construction sites can be very similar to what the, the manufacturing injury, industry had 20 years ago, which is as the factory became more automated and semi-automated, you have machines and people working closely together, there are more and more need, there needed to be a simulation engine or so, software products like a PLC or a brain of that factory to allow the, the factory to run efficiently. And from our perspective, the construction site of the future will have a similar problem. So you'll need a brain, you'll need a strong simulation engine that allows to take a digital twin, access that digital twin from the, the phone in your pocket, it's connected to the internet, it connects to the physical world as well, and you're able to interoperate with, between that digital and physical world and be able to potentially be the brain of the construction site. So we believe that if we can continue to be razor focused on solving problems for our customers in pre-construction, making that operating system for the pre-construction industry, making a simulation engine that's powerful enough, you know, down the road we'll be well positioned to be able to take that simulation and put it into the real world. So overall, there's a anecdotally data we get from some of our customers that an extra hour spent in pre-planning often pays back in eight to 10 hours of savings on site. You know, we are very passionate about this idea of simulating first, you know, spending a little more extra time uh, to simulate multiple scenarios, but ultimately drive a more efficient construction site in the future. Okay, that's my little diatribe. We'll dive into the live demo portion. So uh, to kick it off, um, one of the most important net new features of the world is this idea of getting better data and driving better simulation information and decisions from simulations of, of excavation, which, you know, if you're working in a 2D world, excavation is a challenging thing to visualize, quantify, and, and, and look at phasing. If you're in a 3D world, often very powerful, expensive on-premise softwares that need out a lot of training are solving this problem. So we're trying to make it really easy to do this. So I'm going to pass it over to Pedro. Pedro is going to share his screen. Okay, so Pedro is the persona of a pre-construction uh, planner. I will be the persona of a client. So I'm gonna ask some questions of Pedro and actually I'll make sure I can see what you're doing here. Um, and Pedro is basically gonna walk us through uh, a site. We've, we've come up with a site in San Francisco. If you wanna zoom back, this site has a historic, uh, you wanna zoom back just to kind of show the context. So we have a, a historical building that needs to be preserved and moved on the site. You have some existing buildings and you need to think about different ways to phase this the excavation. So we've come up with this kind of idea for this for this uh, simulation. So I'm going to pause there. Pedro is going to take us from scratch and walk us through it. So Pedro, what would you do first? Yeah, so the idea here is that we need to first uh, understand how we're going to do the excavation. So the plan, if I can show here a little bit about like where the, the next building is going to be, is it? This is the location, and there is a parkade for this building at this location over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to phase the excavation in a way that we're going to demolish these blue buildings first, of course, by isolating the site with the fences and figuring out where we're going to put our trailers. But we're going to do the excavation on this east side first because we want to do the parkade up to a point where I can move this heritage building to this location. So the idea is that this heritage building needs to be uh, conserved and we're gonna move it to another location. Then we're gonna be able to excavate on the west side. And from there, we're gonna do a detailed excavation for the core and then move up with our sequence of construction. Okay, right. should I continue? Continue. Awesome, great. So yeah, so the project start, what we have over here, I'm gonna create one a uh, new milestone that's gonna be our project setup. And with, after I save this, I'm gonna do a very, very like simple idea of a project setup 
just to isolate the site first, and then we will move on to the excavation, right? So we can have over here a fencing around my site, and I'm gonna isolate this part, and then I'm gonna isolate the other part here on the back because I'm also gonna use the slaneway as um, I'm thinking about using as also access points for my for my excavators in the a temporary staging point with my offices, right? So another thing that we need to, to keep in mind is that this little yellow box over here is a gas um, is a, a gas entry point. So we have some some underground uh, gas services over here that we're going to need to figure out. And uh, I could model this and put the, the pipe in and show how how that is is going to be placed. But for now, let's just start with our project setup. And then I'm going to add my uh, movable office here on the back. Right? So keeping in mind that the first stage, we will, we will need to have like a big trailer just because we only we're going to have like a, a, only a few people on the site for, uh, for coordination and administration. And then we're going to move on for the demolition. And after that, we're going to move that trailer for, for the excavation personnel to come in. Okay, so let's say that this is my first stage point. And now I can start creating other steps for excavator and for demolition. Okay. So I'm going to quickly create some dates over here that are just to represent the final, the final stage of demolition and how they would look like. And um, just putting it over here that would take me around four weeks to demolish these buildings over here on the west end. And then I can simply select these buildings from my tree and figure in hide them so I can show that these buildings were, um, were removed from the site at this point in time, right? So this is my first stage of demolition. And then uh, after a couple of weeks, I'm gonna demolish the other, um, the other buildings on the other, uh, on the other side of the, of the site. Demo two, after I save that, now I can also move my, my site office to the inside of my, of my site um, layout like this. And keep in mind that having all of these elements, all of these, um, all of these objects in different points in time, um, they are all being recorded by my, my milestones. So if I move my, my trailer in one point in time, my milestone is telling me where these trailers are supposed to be located at that point in time, right? So these are elements of the site. They are being recorded and being, um, address as a as a progress point okay so okay so i'm i'm gonna dive in here as the owner and i'm gonna ask what are some of the key things that you would have to take into consideration when planning uh, a move from an, a heritage building from one side of the site to the other and then let's tie it quickly because of time i don't want to go too long in the demo we'll start tying into planning and the excavation Okay, so yeah, so key things that we need to figure out is that this structure over here needs to be supported from the below, right? So we, we, we would we need to coordinate this with the, with the trades that will be executing this movement. So they will need to support this from below. So all of the four footprint of that beauty needs to have a support and a structure uh, relied on something that is, that is uh, stable, right? So I cannot move this beauty to a place where I don't have any stable ground underneath it. So I'm gonna need to provide um, uh, temporary support for it at all times, right? So let's start with our first, uh, first excavation stage over here. And I, one second that I just have this over here. And I'm gonna just start by creating my excavation stage on this end. And then I'm gonna bring in my drawing over here as, as a reference for my excavation uh, footprint. So I need to figure out where I'm gonna do my excavation. So I can bring in drawings, I can bring in models, I can bring everything that it can provide me any reference in any, um, any context to plan this excavation. So the first thing that I do is I define an excavation boundary that it's basically my, my editable shape. Right, so I'm gonna create over here, what is my excavation boundary? 
And this will convert the model, convert the terrain into something that I can use to create uh, excavation steps, right? So now with this first uh, step of excavation, as I said before, we have a parquet part of it here that needs to be addressed, right? So if I go and create my cut, that's gonna be this first part of, it, of the excavation. And I can select points around my site to represent that first uh, stage. And over here, you can see that I can define several things about this cut. So what is the elevation of the bottom of that cut? If I want to create that with slope walls, uh, and if, if so, I can create uh, different shapes of my slope walls and where are the ratios. But in this case, it won't be slope walls because we, you're going to use short quick to, to um, do the, the shoring around the, the excavation. And I can see here a preview of what is going to be the cut volume for that excavation based on my, my total elevation over here. So I'm gonna just type in the elevation that I have on my plan, on my excavation plan. And then once I remove this drawing over here from my site, you can see that an excavation has been done over here. So for this case over here, I actually want to create an excavation that goes all the way up to here because I need to, to be able to um, to access the buildings in the excavation parts from this uh, laneway, right? So I'm going to just edit my polyline over here and create uh, several other points that will allow me to, to create this part over here, just a little part, right? So after this is done, now you see that around my, my, my heritage building, I need to have a stable soil. So I need to create a sloping that would be a one-to-one -one sloping just to provide a, a proper support for the, for the foundation of this building, right? So in this case, if I do that, I would just simply go in and add some ramps that would, um, that would show that specific stable soil angle over here. And I can add these ramps to um, just to outline the location of these ramps. Oh, sorry. Just to outline the, the, the support for the, for the heritage building, okay? So there are a couple ways of doing this. I'm doing it with some ramps in this case. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and finalize these areas over here with these ramps. And at this moment, we, we are providing you like a, a curve in the top surface that is generated by a satellite. So you can use that as a reference to create all your, your, um, your excavation steps. And this will also provide you some, um, a good surface to work with and have a QTO provided uh, on the end, right? So you see quickly, I created all the, the sloping walls around the site. So I have now a stable soil for this execution of this, um, for this heritage building, right? So now the next step would be to execute the parquet on the west, on the east end, on the east side, right? So I could be doing like putting the, the, the right dates over here, but just for the sake of the presentation, I'm gonna do it quickly with some, um, some default dates. And now that I show the parquet, you see that this area over here, the parquet that I divided it's gonna because of this of this sloping wall over here. I would need to move this building across this opening, and I would need to provide a temporary support for this, right? So, at this stage, what I'm looking at is that I'm gonna need to spend a lot of money and a lot of time just to provide the temporary support to move this building to its final location. So, its final location will be something around here and rotate it. And at this at this point, I can see right away that this is not actually a good plan just because whenever I rotate this, you see that there is a part of the building that's gonna be um, unsupported, right? So this is our all stages of, of construction that I can easily simulate by using CM Builder and uh, figuring out if this is a, right, a good plan, right? So at this stage, I can just come back to Javi, my, my, my client and let him know like, hey, there's a problem here. We need to figure out how we're gonna, um, we're gonna support this part of the building. And I'm gonna need to rent out a lot of temporary support for this area specifically over here, right? So my solution is I can simply run another scenario where instead of having this sloped wall, I can provide a temporary short quit wall, right? So I could go in, in my scenario simply go in that same scenario and duplicate that 
and create it as a shot create scenario, a reference of like, instead of having that slope wall to provide the support for the beauty, I would actually do a temporary uh, support with a shot queen. So how would we would do that? Um, I already have the, a duplicate scenario over here. So in this stage, whenever I'm gonna do my parkade east, I'm gonna actually not execute this, this ramp. And I'm gonna provide that with a, um, so let me select this ramp over here. And I got, instead of doing that with a ramp, I'm gonna actually execute this with a, with a shot quit wall, right? So we have a shot quit wall over here as a resource that you can simply bring it to your site. So basically, if you go into your soil equipment, actually not the jump truck, but if you go into the soil equipment, you'll be able to see um, where is your shot quit wall. And once you place it over here, you can adjust the shot quit wall to go and um, cover the whole area that you have, right? So I'm gonna just simply create over here. If you zoom in, you see that you have a, a concrete texture that uh, shows uh, a little preview that this is actually a shot quit wall. And then this is something that we can easily uh, plan around with, right? So just adjusting this quickly. And I could go ahead and create a specific shot quit wall also for this area over here, but just for the sake of time, we can just go and create the parquet, bring the parquet at this moment. Okay, so at this moment, the execution of the parquet, I can show that by creating um, this parquet. And now just because my model is divided in a specific way, I can also create a massing to represent the, the part of the, of the parquet that is missing from the original model. So if your 3D model doesn't give you all the context that you need, you can create everything that with, with a massing tool to, to show up the, the different points, um, the different geometry that you need. Okay. My client, do you have any question? I do. I, so I think next when it uh, talk, let's, so let's work through the sequence and just get to the bottom of the hole, cut a few footings to show how the future would work there. And then we'll get to the kind of final simulation and I'll, and I'll show what, it, what, the, what you can share with your client. Yeah, so basically I'm gonna create another step over here where after this parquet is done, I'm gonna actually move my building to the final location. So this is something that can that needs to be coordinated with a specific trade. So uh, this the trade will provide you the information about like what are the structure, the temporary structure they're gonna need, how they're gonna do that whole process, and you can bring those stages in, inside inside scene builder, right? So I'm now gonna create an excavation on the west side, and after that, you see that I can simply go back and forth and see um, and see the different stages of, of my construction. And I can simply um, assess those points at any time, right? So I can assess if my, if my sequence is done properly, if I can I execute this and share this with other people so they can give me their own opinions about the work that I'm doing, right? So I'm gonna go ahead in my excavation process and excavate the rest of my building. And to do so, I'm gonna just bring back my building as a reference, right? So, so I can see the whole parquet and like an outline of the parquet. So this is where I'm supposed to do my, my, my final shape of building. So I will just bring it back as a reference and then I can um, move it over and remove it at whenever I don't need it anymore. So I'm just gonna go and create steps of this execution over here. And once I hit done, my cut's now gonna have the same, um, the same height that I had for the other one. And now that I have my excavation on this west side done, I can remove that part of the, my parquet that I don't need. And at this stage, I'm gonna now create another step for detailed excavation. So keep in mind that you could be doing this all with actual, um, actual drawings, actual models, and using every single geometry that you have as reference to create uh, something that is more, is more accurate and more refined. Right? So I'm gonna go and create a cut over here that was supposed to be um, what is gonna be my core, um, my core uh, foundation. And I can use it, like I can simply use a value that would represent that. And sure. for the sure. core, what I wanna show is also the sloping how the sloping looks like if I want to, for example, slope these walls, right? So see if I select the sloping, you can see that I can select 
if I want to slope outwards or inwards. So depending on where I, what type of drawing you have, you're going to use either the slope inwards or outwards. And you can also select what is the slope wall ratio that you have. So let's say, for example, for this type of soil, I'm going to need to do a three by four uh, sloping. And I'm going to slope out of the sketch because what I selected over there is actually the footprint of my core foundation. OK, so after this is done, so let I roughly did over here some like huge st overall steps of excavation. And you see that I'm, I'm checking over here what are the loose volumes of excavation that is being produced, right? So we are actually using a geometry that is creating for you a reference of a QTO of how much dirt you're going to remove from that site. So you can produce an earthwork takeoff just by going into this report uh, button over here, where we expose all the steps of excavation that you have plus the volumes that you have for those. And you can either add a swell factor over here that will be the factoring for uh, the type of soil that you have, how much that will expand once you remove it from the compacted uh, state. And now from here, you can either export this to a Excel sheet where you will be able to get these volumes and bring it to a budgeting software, or you can use this to, to do your planning or to either like um, use these volumes to actually break it down even more if you need to do so or create other types of reports, but you can also see them from the detail breakdown over here. So um, now I'm gonna share, uh, so you, you know, Pedro the pre-construction manager does all this work uh, and what's the output of this to me, the client, the persona of the client, but what each one of those steps can be tracked in say a markup. The markup can have callouts and different types of camera angles, different ways to, excuse me, right here, different ways to, uh, yeah, exactly, to show kind of, you know, which crane you're using, where, what coordinations you have to have. And this all can be stored inside of a, uh, a presentation link. So if I go back to the first week and I hit uh, play presentation mode. So just for one click, he, he could just hit play. Actually, I'm gonna go out of here. We'll go back to the first milestone, week one, hide the envelope. And I'm, if you guys remember this site, the, how we started, I could just go ahead and put this into presentation mode. So he shared it with me in one click, but I wanted to kind of show it a little bit more. And then there you go. So you press one button. So you, when you're sending this to your you know, architect or site city inspectors, identifying where existing gas lines are, uh, you know, where your main access is going to be during demolition, where site, site trailers are going to be. This is automatically playing like a video. Uh, it's, it's in video format, but at any point as a consumer of this, con uh, of this actual simulation, I can, you know, I can just go ahead and say, I'm going to pause here and I'm going to spin around and be like, okay, that's interesting. They're using shotcrete there. Seems expensive, but probably not as expensive as having to, you know, do the other types of alternatives. And I go back and just hit play again. So if you're doing a, a presentation with your end clients, a really nice dynamic way to create a, a you know a simulation and, and different types of scenarios, but share it in a way that's consumable and interactive, and interactive for for your end customer. And there you go. So that's the end result of excavation, and not just excavation feature function, but how does excavation tie into an overall site logistics uh, plan and what's the output for the customer? So that's our product update so far. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing and we're going to get ready for the, the main event here, the customer spotlight event. So first we're going to start, we're, we try to be nice to Emma here. It's, it's quite late in the UK. So thank you for staying up late. If this was me, I got three young kids. I'd probably already be half asleep. So thanks, Emma. So Emma is uh, from Mott McDonald Bentley, currently working as the bidding manager, looking to secure new opportunities for Dan Bentley, which is part of the global management engineering and development consultancy, Mott McDonald, offering their clients full feasibility design and construction services throughout the JN Oh, sorry, the UK, Jan Bentley, along with Integrated Ventures, Mott McDonald Bentley and JBA Bentley provides full range services, range of services in the water sector and other engineering and construction markets in the UK. Emma's gotten 17 years of experience and has worked across multiple roles in the project design and construction life cycle. So with that, I'm going to pass to Emma and Emma, take it away from here.
Fantastic. Thanks, Javier. That's a, that, that's a great introduction, actually, and uh, pro probably slightly oversells it, but hey, <laughs> we're, we're, we're all good. Um, so, yeah, as, as you say, we're, we're sort of a, an integrated design and build joint venture, um, as, as Mott McDonald Bentley. So, yeah, we're, we're part of the, the Mott McDonald group overall. Um, I mean, we in MMB, we turn over about £300 million annually. Most most of that's sort of in the in the water and wastewater industry, um, but also, you know, across a few other industries. So things like gas transmission and distribution, environment, flood defence, commercial buildings, highways, a bit of everything, really. You so say one of the things is that we're so we, we're being a fully integrated team, we sort of have the same teams who take a project right through from assisting our clients with sort of helping to define problems and concept solutions right through the design phase, right through construction, commissioning and handback. So, you know, tools that you can use all the way through that kind of really demonstrate that right from the early stages um, are exactly what, what we're on the lookout for. For really, so I mean, as a business, we, we're very much committed to digital delivery. It's sort of one of the key themes of, of our company purpose. Um, so a couple of months back, I transferred internally into our bidding and estimating team. Um, and one of the things that I noticed there was actually we probably weren't quite living that aspect of our purpose um, for, for the sort of the, the digital delivery. Really, uh, really that that very early, even pre-contract stage. So not just pre-construction, but but properly keep pre-contract. Um, and kind of thinking about it when when I joined the team, I guess one of the reasons maybe that we didn't really have those sort of 3D and 4D processes set up at that stage of the project was probably around cost in pre-construction. So, I mean, when we get into detailed design delivery, that kind of thing, we're usually building fairly advanced models um, through our design phase. You know, we've, we've developed fairly extensive component libraries, including all kinds of, of metadata and everything within each element. And these these complex models, they really, really add value in construction. You know, they save us time and cost on site um, and ensure that we get everything right the first time. But with that, um, very much as, as so Javier was, was saying that at, at the start, it usually comes with some some fairly highly paid technicians and experts with some very, very big and expensive computers. Um, and then at the bidding stage, it's kind of more difficult to justify that expense really because say you might win let's say 30 percent of the projects that, that you bid for you're carrying quite a big overhead there um for maybe not all that much much success and not not all that much output so i'll just share my screen there um javier can you just give me a nod if you can see that does that does that work fantastic yeah, thank great. you so as I mentioned, we've, we've only sort of been starting on this over the last uh, over the last few weeks, really. So we're, we're quite early on in our CM Builder journey. Um, and, you know, we, as I say, we do quite a lot of sort of civils work and things. So the, this excavation tool is absolutely brilliant for us. So this is just sort of one that we're working on at the minute. It's a, a flood defense scheme for a client. So there's an existing main river down here, a water course backing up. Um, and so we were focusing sort of modeling up this existing channel. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting floodgates in here and building a, a flood defense off, off, off to the side. Um, so yeah, fantastic to see that demonstration of the excavation tool. I've learned a few tips just, just from watching it. But I mean, the, the kind of things that we're looking for in in the sort of the bidding and estimating phase, really, that, that pre-contract phase, um, I guess there's two things. We, we're firstly looking to be able to really quickly um, compare options, you know, look at different methods, all of that kind of stuff, see what actually works to be able to demonstrate it with confidence. But also we're looking at, right, what's important for our clients? What do they want to see? Um, you know, the questions that we generally get back from clients aren't so much about the detail of the engineering. They're about, right, how is it going to interface with the public? How are we going to sort of manage flows, manage flood risk, all of that kind of stuff as you're going through? So being able to sort of put details on very quickly and, and show around and say this is just a work in progress model rather than a sort of a, a final visual just to show, right, we're going to put a public a, a public footpath diversion around here because we're clo closing this off through off through the site and all that kind of thing. You know, it's it's absolute gold dust in the, in, in the bidding and estimating phase um, of, of projects, as well as then having something really, really tangible to be able to to then hand over to, to our sort of detailed design and construction teams when it comes to that stage. So, you know, you can you can show it very clearly. You can show, right, this is where we're going to be taking construction access. This is this is where, where there's going to be public pedestrian access. This is where we're going to have our, our cabins and everything. You know, you can then phase the works. You can bring in machines. You know, we're looking at doing some sheet piling here. So you can go, right, am I going to be able to do it off a crane? And you go, OK, so we can reach all the sheet piles on this side, looking at looking at the crane, but the ones on this side, I mean, this is a, a typical crane that we've got on our fleet. We're either going to need to hire in a crane from elsewhere that, that's bigger to reach these, or we're going to need to look at a row closure over here to do it. And, you know, just, just having that ability to very, very quickly sort of model up um, 
and think about the the scenarios and the options say it's absolutely fantastic for us and you know you can kind of go through you can you can very quickly demonstrate you can very quickly um get to get to costs um get to programs all of that kind of stuff as you go on so yeah it's um i'd say it's one of the one of the real good things to have uh, to to have come up this year for us we're always on the lookout for new projects and and everything and uh, yeah so far it's uh, it looks like a real good one so that's, thanks that's Javier great. I'll uh, hand yeah. back at that, that no okay? no that, that's fantastic I have you know so many questions asked but I, I think I might hold off for the end so I don't uh, take over but that, one thing that's really um pretty neat to see from a from a kind of estimating bidding and pre-construction perspective is you know, this is I think the only presentation you'll see today where there's no imported model, right? So there's no imported IFC file from say Revit or Archicad or you know Tecla or something like that. There's you're getting to some output, you know, you know using the mass. Everything comes in the product, which is yeah. kind of nice, and being able to make those decisions quickly. So pretty pretty cool to see, and and it's nice to see the progress you're making, Emma, and, and the rest of your team. I know you got quite a few people in there kind of meeting uh, weekly with Pedro and and and, do, and going and doing the implementation. So it's really great. Thanks, Emma. Uh, okay, next we're going to move to uh, all the way from the UK to sunny California. <laughs> that's not a bad. That's not a bad transition. Uh, Paul Kristen is uh, KCS West. He's from KCS West Construction down in, in Los Angeles. Paul has over 28 years of, of construction experience, um, including a ver variety of roles in project management, business development, pre-construction. He's currently director of pre-construction at KCS West in Los Angeles. He leads overall pre-construction efforts and sets the stage for commencement execution of successful pro successful projects. KCS West has an extremely impressive portfolio of construction projects ranging from, ranging from commercial high rises, uh, high tech manufacturing facilities, special use, uh, entertainment, sports, hospitality, residential and educational facilities. And uh, it's really great to have you Paul and uh, we're really excited to see your presentation. Take it away. All right, thank you very much for uh, hosting me here on this. This is uh, quite an honor, I appreciate it. And I just want to say you CM Builder and CAD Maker folks are okay. I uh, <laughs> really enjoyed our inner, our work together. Especially, uh, I want to call out Pedro and Callum. Uh, they've been very instrumental in uh, dragging me along here. And then uh, thank you for Emma and I, Anya and uh, Shruti for uh, setting this up. All right, I guess I should be sharing. I'm going to give that a try. So I have a short presentation. It shouldn't take more than an hour or so. Um, I got my popcorn ready. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I hope you can see this slide and my cursor moving around. All right. CM Builder, thank you. KCS West, who are we? Well, uh, KCS West is part of Kojima uh, Corporation, which is an international uh, construction and development company. We have offices in most continents. And we've been in LA for uh, you know over 50 years. KCS West is part of Kojima USA, which is a subsidiary of Kojima. And within America, uh, there are a number of uh, general contractors that are make up K Kojima USA. So we're out here in California. And what are, we, what are we all about? What do we do? Well, we do residential, we do hospitality, we do entertainment, post-production facilities. We also do industrial facilities. Here's some of the things we've done in the past as a company, There's some big, big time projects there. And uh, those are the past. We just recently can, finished a bunch of hotels. And we're right now we're doing a lot of multifamily. This guy is uh, me and uh, my, my past. I've been with some very large general contractors before I was lured over here and uh, worked on a lot of uh, big time projects for them. So, and this is just an example of kind of a structure. So what we're gonna talk about the implementation of this solution and why we frankly were even looking for an implementation of this solution. So having worked in some larger general contractors with even greater resources, um, we found that well, I found when I came here that uh, they, uh, they were using a lot of legacy solutions here uh, for uh, business development, for showing site logistics plans. Um, our light legacy way of doing it here has been very basic 2D, you know, Adobe, Bluebeam, so on and so forth. 3D renderings were used 
uh, seldom. And uh, that, that investment uh, was not made unless the project was of a certain range. Um, a lot of companies that we compete against have their own virtual design and construction departments. Um, so that's pretty tough when you're trying to sell your company against another company and they have these resources that are just constantly churning on various projects. So uh, we needed to find a solution for this. And it was always, oh, we're not going to invest in a department and it costs, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars on a project to do this. Well, uh, one of my South African friends, I think that's where he's from, uh, Kevin from CM Builders contacted me back in May and I said, great. And uh, we went through it and took a look at it. So this is what the, this is the way we do things now. And we're in the transition phase to uh, CM Builder. And it's nice, but it's not all that impressive, right? Um, and frankly, some of these have been a lot worse than this. Um, I'm going to show what uh, we created in uh, CM Builder uh, for the project. And just to give you a little background, this is an older Google shot. Uh, this is a brand new Le Meridian Hotel that was built on this site. We're going to be building right in here a uh, 96 key condominium this is all completed now the hotel's open but i don't have a, a shot of that so coming back to cm builder i should have had this loaded up i apologize um i'm gonna take a second uh the impetus of this again was we need to we need to improve what we do and uh, i was very impressed with the renderings and what we can uh crank out in this so here we have a um uh, you know, Emma showed hers from uh, what she's doing in that park area. Here we have an area directly next to um, the Santa Anita racetrack in Arcadia, California. And we have, okay, here we go. So I'm just going to jump to our presentation and run through that and show what we've done. And uh, everybody's going to have to forgive me because I am not the greatest, despite using computers for 42 years, back when they were uh, not quite as big as they were originally, but things like Apple IIe's and such, I am not the greatest. But I built a lot of this with a lot of help from uh, Pedro and Callum, uh, kind of saying oh, this, and it, you catch on pretty quick. So here we are. Uh, showing kind of a progression of uh, our fencing going in, showing our, our logistics, how you get into the site, how you get out. These happen to be one-way streets, so that kind of complicates issues. Um, we actually have a basement here of one story, so we're showing a pile driving rig. And this isn't complete, okay, but uh, this is where we're going on this project. And we use the... Uh, excavator tool for this. We created some, ooh, look at that spinning around. We created some ramps. We show the excavation. We imported in a structural model. And here you have some footings. And this is uh, still, you know, a draft in progress. We're showing a crane showing here where we don't have a tower crane on this job. We're gonna be using mobiles. So we're using that to show that we're bringing in uh, uh, rebar into these various pits, keeping it going, theoretically, there she goes. So now you see the model building and uh, that's so cool. So here we have uh, showing our uh, structural model and along the way, and I my, this thing is blocking my view, but I'll, we can set the model individual model pieces to individual dates. And uh, if I wanted, I could have said, and I will eventually show, you know, there's gonna be a man lift here or a hoist, a temporary hoist, you know, a temporary elevator on the outside of the building. And we're gonna leave out this area. And if that model bit was, you know, a specific item, we could delete that and then show it all pop in, in a zipper at the end of the project. 
you can keep going. We've got some uh, captures here that showed various things. Here's our skin, our roof going on. And there's our day before, uh, actually be maybe a couple of weeks before we're gonna turn it over. All this is gonna disappear. We'd be finishing the paving of this parking lot. And there's our uh, models finishing out and away we come in and the fence disappears and boom, building is done. So um, this is uh, still a work in progress for us. We are uh, haven't had any presentations in the, since we only had this about a month um, since getting the software. So we're using it in various things. We're looking at scenarios on projects, what makes sense, what doesn't. Uh, the new excavation tool, I definitely could use it on another project where we're having a discussion with uh, a sub as to what the exact volume should be uh, of the excavation. So there's a there's a lot of great stuff here and uh, a lot of great opportunity for us to to uh, build off of this. That's great. That, that's fantastic, Paul. Thank you very much. And very I think powerful message about kind of that two D to three D four D transition or that um, kind of journey, right? It's it's pretty cool and and pretty neat to see that uh, that KCS West and yourself and your team is kind of continuing to push innovation at the, in the organization. Okay, thank you, Paul. So we're gonna thank jump you. next. We're gonna jump next into Xenia. So Xenia Gordienko here locally in uh, in in the west coast of Canada, Metro Construction. Over 15 years of experience, Xenia uh, brings with her abundance of expertise in, in virtual design and construction, background in computer science and architectural design. She jump started her career into testing 3D software, um, evolving her skills into set into coordinating and developing complex construction visualizations. She's worked on projects upwards of a billion dollars, has a lengthy resume of projects spanning healthcare facilities, infrastructure projects, and commercial buildings. Since joining ETRO as VDC manager, Azini has been responsible for de uh, developing and implementing BIM strategies and, and standards across our projects. ETRO Construction is Western Canada's fastest growing construction company, whose goal is to build what matters tomorrow, today. Without further ado, Zinia, here we go. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bye. Yeah, so Etro is actually a Vancouver-based company, and uh, for today we have 60 employees. Uh, we have residential, commercial, me, uh, small and middle-sized projects. Uh, right now we have eight pre-construction projects, uh, 17 running projects, and uh, how you said, we are very young. Uh, Etro was found five years ago, and uh, for 2021, our, um, our project volume is a uh, hundred million. And uh, we are well known, what is the difference between us and the rest, right? We are well known um, as a lean and very tech forward company. Uh, we are a very efficient company uh, with a small number of employees. And, uh, but, but, but the people are always first. This is exactly not the technology, but the people. And um, uh, today, uh, before I'm uh, sharing with you my, our current project, um, I would like to highlight uh, troubles of virtual design and construction and how exactly CM Builder help us in these challenges. Um, there's a four for me. Um, this first one, it's adaptation of the new technology. Uh, how you know, we have uh, some older generation, some younger generation, and everyone has their own challenges and ideas how the technology should help, right? And um, I would like to invite you and go back in the past, how it was in the past before all big computers and software came. Um, Superintendent, the most uh, intelligent person arrived at the site, right? To see what is gonna happen, what is gonna happen. He's taking his uh, little sketchbook and creating location of the site, where is going to be our assembly areas, where is our truck is coming on. And exactly this sketch, was used further on uh, on sites, right? For any modification, it was recreated a sketch, but then AutoCAD arrived, right? And now there, a superintendent uh, has this chance to take his sketch and give it to somebody who will bring it in the nice lines, right? In the colors and uh, have a better presentation. But guys, here is it. We're starting to have this gap between side person who is taking, carrying the knowledge 
and somebody who is expert in some software, right? Here is the uh, knowledge and here is the uh, executive tool. And whatever is happening in the process of the reconstruction or construction on this logistics plan, uh, it means that this person who is carrying the knowledge has to go to a person who is carrying the knowledge in AutoCAD. And uh, I don't know in your organization, but uh, where I've worked in the past, it was two separate division and the person who was on site haven't even had licenses for um, some special expensive and um, yeah, expensive is the key, <laughs> uh, AutoCAD or Revit licenses, right? And now technology has been developed, thanks God. And finally, we got to like a CM builder. For me, it's exactly the God blessing where um, I, uh, we and I have the possibility to give this tool to somebody who doesn't need the special expertise and long educational process uh, like in Revit and AutoCAD and dive deep into this. So uh, many people before me already mentioning how fast and easy it is and intuitive. And we had as well this um, great Pedro um, session for two hours where you're like already expert in CM Builder. And back to our guy who has uh, exactly the right tool for his knowledge expertise can be expressed immediately without this third party. And about new generation, I don't know about uh, your organization, but new generation, in my opinion, don't want to do anything without the playing. And CM Builder looks like a game and uh, so they're jumping directly on it. My um, second challenge, um, it's less of a challenge, but uh, you will understand what I mean. It's exactly how all these construction documents can be understand quicker how we are helping us uh, to, uh, to speed up our thinking processes. And even though we have all these beautiful drawings, exactly 2D and as well in same builder, you are jumping every time into 2D view, but it's exactly this analysis of the plan view and section and creating your own movie in your head where here you have exactly this 3D and uh, why virtual design construction and why logistics plan in uh, CM Builder, just because we understand things faster. Our human world is 3D world. We understand 3D quicker. I'd um, like to share a couple of um, pictures just created for you. Um, my colleague, Eric, project coordinator on the Davis Street, Berkeley Tower created this. So this picture was uh, done from drone. And this is the um, a picture from a screenshot from the CM Builder. And uh, later I will share with you a picture from this side with the Kootenai, where exactly excavation is right now in progress. Picture and reality, um, that's what we build, what we see, right? So by having a 3D, we are avoiding uh, any miscommunication, misunderstanding. And that's exactly the second challenge, how you can avoid all those misunderstandings, right? The third one is, uh, if we're speaking about 3D and virtual design and construction, is of course access. Uh, and data flow. Javier was mentioning that before, and this is exactly why CM Builder for me. Um, I'm not longer counting licenses uh, for experts, right? Everyone in Etro uh, has admin rights, everyone is added to this. And um, yes, you don't need a high education to, um, to navigate through, this is the key. And think through, like how many times you have been in a project where it was a 3D model, it was a 3D model, but only limited number of people had access to it. So for me, same builder is as well a viewer, direct access, everything online based. And fourth one, it's uh, Emma was as well mentioning just the um, effort which we are um, bringing into all this VDC stuff. And particularly if we're speaking about uh, pursuit and pre-construction services, we don't have time, we don't have money at the end of the day to invest in all this uh, fancy renderings. We have to have something what is will benefit our site, what will um, clarify our issues for us. And exactly, once again, avoid misunderstandings. So for me, it's exactly how much time I spend on CM Builder and how much time I will spend on the 4D visualization by using Revit, 
uh, Levis Rock Simulate or Synchro, right? Even though they can create other level of details. So I will, for the pre pursuit, let's say, project which I'm working on in same builder, I can, uh, in the project uh, which I can uh, accomplish in three hours, I will do mm, like, I will sit for sure for three days uh, by using different software. Um, and that's exactly why I'm saying yes, because uh, this effort is just like too much for me and we don't have this time. And this is this in the end, we have right tool for the right people, right? We have this 3D world, our absolutely normal human <laughs> world where we don't need to analyze all these drawings and I'm convinced that this is the future. Uh, this data access that everyone can see, everyone can navigate, and um, uh, this VDC effort. In the end, for us human beings, we can focus in exactly on the things which really matter. Um, and um, of course, increase our productivity and efficiency. Now, I would like to share with you a project that we are working on right now. I personally found this challenging uh, because we have actually two projects in the same time. So it's the same client, uh, it's, but it's two buildings, two slots. Uh, it's a 15 stories uh, mixed use uh, rental tower. There's two and a half because of the slope um, parkade, special for Paul, <laughs> as a parking levels there. And um, so we're all together about 72 millions on this both. Um, just started from in June and would like to guide you through our um, uh, vision in the excavation uh, area, how we are simulate and um, sequence in uh, excavation. So site is um, typical city site, I would say. Um, high, um, high traffic road is testing. We have as well high voltage power line close to our construction, which will come here. This is the building which will be demolished or is it already demolished? And uh, uh, we found a good office in the old um, bridal salon close to site. A busy corner, this is bus loop, and this is the bus stop with many multiple buses, so many uh, pedestrian around. Safety is very important on this side. And uh, here we have just one family residential houses. If we are jumping to June. Yeah, I will just uh, guide you through of our excavation where we started as well thinking how we can as, as soon as possible install crane, right? Um, demolishing on one corner of the street and um, lifting and excavating on the other. I think it's very self-explanatory what's going on. I don't want to read the uh, notes. I think it's uh, exactly so. The idea is how, what is gonna happen on the both sides, right? Where we are on one corner and where we are on the other. And um, uh, how, yeah, exactly how, how uh, what kind of uh, equipment uh, machines we will need on site in certain times. August and then there. So it's exactly built, um, built right now. So you can see and our projection for the future. Yeah. So estimation, the end of September, we have our crane installed and moving forward is our detailed planning, detailed excavation here. Uh, September and, oh, it was the, um, and end of September. Okay, and the mind. Just October. I try to navigate actually around the site 
it'll show you different areas which are exactly significant in the certain point. So exactly in October, our estimation is that we will have our foundation and underground services in progress. And uh, in November, the first slab on grade, this is the plan. And then further on, there's there uh, and Boundary Street and the Boundary Building, uh, Green Foundation should be done as well. Yeah, so this is exactly uh, our progress. I think it's um, a lot to figure it out for us um, on, the, on this, the steps. And uh, personally, if I'm working in CM Builder, uh, I'm noticing many things which I'm not noticing working on 2D. Um, like third dimension really helps. Um, yeah, that's what I would like to share with you from Edro Construction today. Thank you amazing. very much. Zinia. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much, Zinia. That was great. And what a great use case on that current project. Thanks for sharing that. So last but not least, Hunter Vyatorek from Nuts and Construction Services. Hunter is a virtual design center specialist at Nuts and Construction Services, um, a firm that's pre-planned, managed, or built almost every size and type of project across a wide range of industries, from small office buildings to large medical centers. Hunter, Hunter got interested in useful tech during college through different software programs, which is when he started to see the full potential of technology to solve problems. He reads about innovation and talks with his friends and family to stay on top of the latest tech trends, and he enjoys the fast pace of construction industry and how every day can bring a new project across his desk. All right, Hunter, take us away. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, my kind of experience is I'm really fresh into the industry. I had an internship um, that started in this, or January of this year um, at Knut's Construction. And then um, back in May, they brought me on full time. So because um, kind of speaking to some of that experience, like learning about some of the technology and where construct the construction industry wants to take and use the different technology that is out there and that's um, utilized. Uh, one of the panelists already talked about how there is that gap of the experts in the office and then the, fi the field where they're used to the traditional, um, let's look at the plans, let's break out our rulers, let's, let's stick to what we know. And so learning to understand that gap and trying to fill that gap is definitely about a super fun challenge that um, at Knutson we're really focused on striving to um, basically fill, fill that void and um, everything that they talked about in school like the best way to describe it is it's just the tip of the iceberg there you can take any software that you want totally use it in any way that even a totally different way that wasn't meant for um, and that's one thing that uh, I really um, learning about CM Builder we've been a customer for a little less than a month now and um, utilizing it and um, just being able to use the the um, the, the 3D model to be able to talk to our, our, our ideas of the project, uh, implement it to the owner, and just being able to use it as a tool to basically get our ideas out and be able to talk to them. Because um, that's one thing that even I think any expert in any kind of field can, once they get excited about a topic, it's really easy to talk very technical and really kind of overshoot some of um, is for example some of the owners it might be their first project so it's really easy to talk super technical and talk over their head but this is a really good tool to be able to help them visualize it and really understand um, as a company how we're going to treat their project and how we want to basically um, create the best project for them so um, i'm just going to go ahead and jump into the project that i have going here um, oh what's this one so um, we actually just used CM Builder um, on our first project here uh, the past, uh, past week. It's 50th in France here. Um, it was in Minnesota, right on the border of Minneapolis and Edina. Um, it's a big kind of shopping center um, right in here. There's a lot of high, high end shopping areas. So we really wanted to basically get the message across that we understand the area. We want to make sure that we don't impact any of the businesses and we want to be a good, um, basically a good steward of the land as we're creating something new and not create a bad, bad name for the owner and be the, be the, the, the business that screwed up other people's businesses throughout construction. So um, this was a perfect uh, tool to help us uh, show those images. 
Um, so as you can see, basically just started off with a very basic, uh, basic site plan, sh shutting down some of the traffic lanes um, to be able to create a, um, create a space for us to be able to use the different equipment. Um, one thing that we really um, focused on was this power line back here. Um, it wasn't something that they even the, the owners what, uh, were aware of. Um, this big power line um, basically shut down the whole site. Uh, where, where we placed our clearing, it was within um, a 20 foot radius of that power line. And um, obviously with OSHA and everything, that is a no-go. Um, so that's one thing that we really, sh we really um, pointed them out uh, and really kind of talked to that point in, and two, I, I should have mentioned in the beginning, um, we use CM Builder in the interview process. Um, the pro this project itself, it was a negotiated bid project. So they took, um, I think they brought three other companies to the interview process. And um, fortunately with CM Builder's help, uh, we were able to win the job. And that's one thing that the owner did speak to is um, they were really impressed with um, how we brought technology and how we are gonna implement technology on this site. So, uh, so that was a big win for us. And we we're really excited to, really excited to have that. And to, um, for being super fresh into the industry, that was a cool part, really cool to be a part of. And so um, digging back into the, into the model here, um, we were really able to kind of show some of the excavation um, being such a tight site. We really needed to focus on um, all of the soil excavation, um, what kind of soil retentions, uh, different retention systems we were gonna use because we're just, obviously it's a super small site. So we wanted to create as, l as little disturbance as possible. So we used, we used these different, um, different retaining systems to be able to talk to that's one thing as a company we're focusing on and we're, uh, we're, um, we're keeping in mind throughout the whole process. And so basically, basically just showing in some of the different other, um, just showing the owner basically what's gonna happen on their project and what other um, equipment we're gonna be bringing on and how that equipment is gonna affect the, the area and how we're keeping that in the back of our mind the whole time. One thing that was super unique about this project is the fact that it had, um, uh, uh, tension, tensioning deck. So one thing that our superintendent actually he was um, in the interview process. Um, he was able to talk to the fact on how he was going to plan on um, doing the different layers, doing the different sections to be able to get into. Obviously, this is going to be a big issue when it comes to tensioning because both on the left and the right side um, we're butting right up, right up to um, current buildings. So uh, he basically spent maybe five minutes just explaining the whole process and the owners really appreciated that that's like use his expertise to pair along with this technology that he had this was his first time obviously his first time seeing it and us as first time using it as a company so being able to pair newer technology with expertise that um has been built for the past 15 years that he's been working in the industry has been was a really cool process to see so um basically uh, this project is a, right now we estimate that's going to be a $26 million um, condo, very high end finishes, um, a lot of different terraces and um, green roofs that they're, they're really wanting to get on. And um, yeah, this is kind of the completed project that they're working on. Each little white, um, each little white roof is a green roof. The color came in a little different than we were hoping, but um, in the end, it still didn't make a big factor. They the um, owners really enjoyed our um, presentation um, and ended up picking our company. So the one thing that I really wanna highlight that I think um, as I was going through building this model, I really enjoyed the way that the, um, the model, as you import it into CM Builder, you have it broken out into, um, into these different um, models. So you can go in there as simply as hiding, uh, hiding that power line where you don't want to see it. How simple those are broken up. I think it's expanded super easily where if I wanted to hide this roof real quick, it comes in and basically clicking on that roof as simple as going in and hiding it. And basically, so creating your different scenarios when you have that model in, um, in like uploaded into the, into the scenario, um, it's super easy to create those milestones and super straightforward. So that was one aspect that I really enjoy about seeing Builder and um, getting getting to understand it more and using it yeah, more and more and more. Amazing. I, that's, uh, that's, that's all I've got.
Awesome, Hunter. That, that was awesome. That was really great. Thank you so much for that. And congratulations on the big win. And, uh, you know, I, it's, it's just great to hear. Great to hear you had some success on that project and were able to communicate with the, with the client and get your superintendent involved and have a, a great uh, kind of visual cue to, to reduce risk and, and differentiate yourself to the, to the client, which is great. Okay, that's it. We're a couple of minutes over. Thanks for your patience. I just want to say thank you so much to Emma, Paul, Xenia, and Hunter. I thought that was a really good cross section of you know grizzled veterans with you know young grads right out of school, pre early stage precon, some jobs that are actually starting actual construction. Uh, pretty exciting to see the different types of breaths. And, and thank you so much for your contributions. We really appreciate this opportunity to 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 show the product to you guys today and to talk also about these great businesses from all over the world. So that's it. That's it for us. We'll hang on tight for a couple more minutes. Uh, we had some question and answer, but I want to get let people get out of here because we're a bit over time. And uh, you know, if there's any issues, you can get a hold of us at uh, Javier at cadmakers.com. If you have any questions about the product or if anything that comes up after this event, uh, you know, please don't be uh, shy of getting a hold of us. Okay, so Leo, uh, so your question, able to slice and cut slabs. It depends on how the uh, currently depends on how the models imported. So it's what's done, let's say, in the model first, if you've done your pore breaks. Uh, inside Revit or Tecla, let's say, and you can bring it in, you can, you, you'll be able to access those same, you know, pore breaks and in, inside CM Builder right now. Uh, so we don't split the mesh inside CM Builder, but the next, one of the next big features we're currently working on is Concrete Pore Manager. So you'll be able to import the model if it's all a mesh and be able to apply pore breaks and uh, formwork sequencing and calculate quantity takeoffs directly from each of those pore breaks. So you'll be able to do the post-processing concrete pore manager inside builder, even if the model, if you have, you know, I'm sure you see lots of models where the, the elevator is just one big mesh, right, from, from the ground floor all the way to the top, let's say, because they don't split it inside Revit, let's say, you'll be able to split it inside builder. But at the moment, when you bring it in, uh, it's all, it depends on how the model was modeled in the first place. Thanks again. Thanks, everyone.